Hi, John here. Today we're going to look at a pinch valve. I'm going to explain to you how it works. We'll look at some of the main components and we'll also look at some of the pinch valve's applications. So we can see that a pinch valve is actuating at the moment. It is moving from the open position to the closed position. But before we get into the details, let's first have a look at a pinch valve, how it would normally look. And this is how we would normally see a pinch valve, depending on the size, designs do differ. And we can see that it is incredibly streamlined. It has very few parts and is a very unique type of valve compared to a lot of the other valves we've been looking at, such as the gate, globe, ball and butterfly type valves. Let's take a cross section again. And what I'll do, I'll add some labels. So here we have a pinch valve. The pinch valve is named a pinch valve simply because we are pinching this black item here, referred to as the sleeve, and we are pinching the sleeve together in order to close the valve. We'll see it closing in a moment. And now the valve is closed. There can be no flow through the valve if we return to our full view because it is totally closed. If we were trying to get through now, you'll see there is not a hole that is big enough and the fluid or perhaps the solids or gases would just be stuck on this side of the valve. However, if we release the pressure on the outside of the sleeve, the valve opens and we can go through the valve. Pinch valves can be used for starting, stopping and regulating flow. But the effective throttling range for this type of valve is between 10 and 95% of the rated flow capacity. I think it's fair to say that the concept of the valve is relatively easy to understand. We could literally just imagine that our thumb and fingers were pressing down or if we were grabbing this black tube and pinching it or squeezing it together, that's going to put it in the closed position and we will open our hand and it's going to put it in the open position. Very simple concept. In order to achieve this open close operation, what we're actually going to do is apply compressed air on this side through this hole. And the compressed air when applied is going to squeeze the sleeve together and it's going to close the valve. We can also then drain the air pressure off in order to open the valve again. This whole black area is called the sleeve with the piece just outside of the sleeve being referred to as the cartridge, that is this area here. We then have the valve body, this area here, and an end plate, this area here, which is screwed onto the body. There are very few components, as you can see, there is no bonnet, there is no packing, there is no stem, and really speaking, the disc itself is also the seat. So now we know how it works and we've looked at its main components. Let's now have a talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages associated with this type of valve. One of the biggest advantages with this type of valve is that the pressure drop through the valve is very low. The pinch valve when open, offers almost unobstructed flow through the valve. We can see here that the pinch valve offers only a very small reduction in internal pipe diameter. There's this section along here. And that means that we're going to offer very little resistance to flow, which ultimately is going to give us a very low pressure drop through the valve. Another big advantage with this type of valve is that there are very few components, which also makes the valve quite cheap. As mentioned previously, this valve can be used to stop, start and regulate flow, which again is a big advantage when you consider that some other types of valves can only start and stop flow. Although our valve is pneumatically actuated, it's also possible to hydraulically actuate pinch valves. I think by far the largest advantage with this type of valve though, is that because of the low number of components, there are very few opportunities for the valve to leak and there are also very few opportunities for contamination to get into the system. 
This means if we have quite corrosive substances flowing through the valve, they're going to be fully contained by the sleeve and the body. And we can choose materials for the sleeve and the body that are very corrosive and erosive resistant. The only disadvantage with pinch valves are that it's quite difficult to use a pinch valve within a system that has a vacuum. If we have a vacuum within the system, this tends to collapse our sleeve because we're effectively sucking the sleeve together, which is going to close the valve. In order to get around this, we can actually apply a vacuum on the outside of the sleeve between the body and the sleeve itself, and this counteracts the vacuum on the interior side of the sleeve, which ultimately prevents the sleeve from clamping together and closing. Typically this valve will be used for slurries, that is liquids with a large amount of suspended bodies. And this is because the seating area of the valve is quite large. If we press play, we can see now that the seating area of the valve stretches from here to here and that ensures we get a good seal, which means our valve is not gonna pass and we're not gonna get any leakage. These valves are also commonly used in pneumatic systems that convey solids, such as granules. If you wanna learn more about valves, check out our Introduction to Valves course. You'll find the link in the video description, and if you click on that link, you'll be able to purchase the course at a discounted price. If you like this video, please do share it on social media. It really does help me out, helps me produce more and more content and allows me to post more and more videos. Thanks very much for your time.